So what's this horse, Jeff? It's Conman. We've had him since he was six years old. He's 13 now. Uh, he's done absolutely nothing in lockdown. He stayed in the field until August. Same as you. Uh, Sarah's been riding him at a couple of little shows. Jumping 120. Uh, he's jumped Nations Cups with Joe Clayton. He jumped the Puissance 12 months ago with me at the Horse of the Year show. He's done, he's done everything, really. Very good. How did he get on at the Puissance at the Horse of the Year show? Puissance at the Horse of the Year show, he jumped clear twice, and I think he had it down at six foot eight, maybe. Which I don't know what that is in metres. It's a big fence. Just over two metres, is it? It's a big fence. Did you have to stand on your tiptoes as you was coming to it? <laughs> the plan was maybe I'd have probably jumped him in the Hickstead Derby this year, uh, but it didn't happen. But he's very brave, and uh, yeah, it's great. He's he's friend of other horses in the in the collecting ring, uh, but you've just got to work around that. The, the situation where there's only five in the collecting ring at the moment suits us, suits us really well. What do you want me to do, Al? Good. Let's just work him on the flat a little bit. As you can see, the horse is straight away very responsive. What are you doing? Just because I set flat work, you don't have to do sitting trot. Go rising. That looks too uncomfortable. Can I show you my dressage? <laughs> Without stirrups. I, think, I thought you were trying to charge. <laughs> right? Without stirrups. Oh. <laughs> he thought I wanted counter canter then. So I'm going to canter down the centre for you. Doing, uh, what do you do? Four time changes? Well, we do flying changes, but just maybe. Go on. Oh, God. <laughs> that was late. That was not good. That was a good one. That was a good one. When I say late, I mean in a good flying change, the back leg and front leg are meant to change at exactly the same time. Like that, which was very, very good. It's quite impressive, Jeff. Why do you have to have no stirrups just to make your legs two centimetres longer? Yeah. You see, people think that I could actually make him put his stirrups down and that would make a difference, but the only difference is he wouldn't be able to reach them. That's how he's sat on the horse now for probably 50 years, so we're not going to change him. But at the same time, as you can see, Jeff is definitely not a dressage rider, but at the same time, his horses are very, very responsive. And again, that was a very, very good, from where I was stood, quite a straight flying change. So, as you can see, everything's nice and relaxed. The horse has obviously got a bit of age about him, but everything Jeff asks him to do, he does in a very nice way. Well, is that your dressage done and dusted? <sighs> I'm out to puff. Do you fancy a go? Oh, this is go what on. he does to me every time. It's you... basically a demonstration with Oliver riding Jeff's horses, so he doesn't have to today. Right, don't mess about. He's a bit. You've, to, you've got to get... Hang on, let me get my breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's after half a dressage test. Uh, I need somebody to leg him up or something because he runs away. Or to keep... I have to throw on two, three. Oh, sorry about the weight, lad. <laughs> um, I'm allowed to put my stirrups down a little bit. I, feel I, thought, like... you might, I thought you might have wanted him up. I feel like... Um... <laughs> Thank you, Dottori. I remember this horse as a young horse and he was definitely had a bit of a quirk about him to say the least. And even now, you know, I've never sat on him ever before and straight away he's got a little bit of a look behind him saying, who are you? Whilst I quietly put my stirrups down. And again, some very good horses are like that. Ballamore class, 
would be a very, very quirky individual and we know his quirks now and we work round his quirks. Um, but at the same time, if somebody new got on Ballamore class, especially if he was coming back into work, they'd definitely know that he was warning them that he wasn't used to them. You pick up the reins and just quietly go into trot. Let's try and get him nice and relaxed. Good boy. That's a good boy. Good, and it doesn't matter what horse you get on, the first thing you try and do is befriend them. And it doesn't matter what top class rider, and I mean when I say top class rider, really top class rider, the ones that you see again and again and again in top level, in any discipline, they're the ones that get the horses working for them. As you can see now, he starts to relax, his head starts to get a little lower. That's good, change the rein. There's a good boy. Every time he comes a little soft or relax, relaxes, I give him a little touch on the neck, a little pat. And again, you can hear him blowing his nose again. That means he's starting to relax. Does it? Well, he's not snorting and he hasn't got his tail over his back. When I, so. when I blow my nose, it means my throat's blocked up in snot. <laughs> Disgusting. That's good, good boy. Again, he's a little spooky. There are people in the gap there, halfway down the indoor school, and you just have the feeling that this horse misses absolutely nothing. You feel that everything that changes, every bit of movement he picks up on. Probably needed Jeff to weigh him down as a young horse. Good boy, good boy. Going to pop him into canter now. And exactly the same thing. He's got a lovely, comfortable canter. I've ridden a lot of Jeff's jumpers over the years. And they're all very, very similar in that they all have a lovely, comfortable canter. A lot of energy. Jeff naturally creates a lot of energy, both on and off a horse, but especially when he's on a horse, he creates power, which obviously creates jump. And I just really like cantering around soft on him. Everything's comfortable. Everything's nice. I'm going to go across the diagonal and try one of See if I can find Jeff's button for a good flying change, which are definitely in there somewhere. All you've got to do now is think, change. You know, he's that experienced. You were uh, right. Very good. Good boy. Again, a little. Quiet, move forwards. It's a beautiful model of a horse, you know, just standing and here, watching him work. And back. The, the Irish would say, an artist couldn't paint a better picture. It's a beautiful horse. Very good, come back across. I'll think flying change again. He, again, he says to me, do Where think? do you want me to go? And Are you ready for badminton next year? Um, no. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I'd be impressed if you could get him to do this. If we canter down the middle line, if you can get him to go. <laughs> oh my god. Huh? I don't really, I didn't, I lost count on what you were actually trying to do there, but. 
We'll have a little, little play if you want. Try and get on the line. <laughs> huh? I think he, um, he pretty much, as Jeff said, you, you think it and he does it. He's very sensitive. Good boy. Good boy. And again, a little pat on his neck. Let him know that. So if you want me to come to Powell with you at Kentucky or anywhere to work your horses for you, you know where I am. <laughs> I do wee a bit of sun on my back. <laughs> Just have a canter over that cavaletti now, well. We'll let him come on the third day, not before. I don't think the rest of the event riders would know what you were saying. Lovely, good boy. Again, with Jeff's horses be having such good canters, with being so comfortable, you really feel as though it's a pleasure to ride them to a fence. It's very easy to see a, to see a distance on them. And as I said, there's loads of power, so your job is just to keep it the same all the way. Again, he's very good, because. I was a little bit backwards there saying, just whoa, just wait for me. And he straight away gets into another gear and responds. And I think that's probably the key to all of these sports that you get the horse as responsive as possible and you can make different decisions then. You can allow them to come forwards. Good boy. All right, so far, Jeff. Very good. What do I do? Jump the uh, jump the small vertical, then round to the oxer, and then a change reins, roll back to the double. Enjoy yourself. I haven't told him yet. He's going round badminton next year. Who's Michael Young? We've got our own top show jumper. I can't hear any of that for the wind, luckily. Good boy. <laughs> Talk to me, Jeff. Why not start over that, back over the double and down over the oxer? As I always say when I'm teaching, I've no need to teach you, but just because the fences go bigger, we don't have to go any faster. As long as the horse is working correctly underneath us. You can see why Ollie's number one in the world. If he, if he turned to show jumping, he'd be equally as good at it as Michael Jung is. Lovely. And then again, I'm going to go bigger and wider. What's the feeling, Ol? What's, what's the difference between that feeling and an event horse? Uh, this one clears more fences. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's a very different feeling, especially on a third day. I don't think anybody that's not eventing at top level has ever had that feeling, even on a very, very good jumper, unless you've got a freak. Once they've done the cross-country department, the show jumping becomes a whole new sport. It doesn't really feel like show jumping. It feels like trying to clear fences sometimes, not always in the style that you want, but when, you've, when you're riding a show jumper and they're fresh and they've not been, you know, obviously to a show for a while, um, it's just a, a different feeling altogether. A horse that's finding everything very, very easy. He's on top of his job. 
Um, and, you know, in, in eventing terms, there aren't many Toledo de Curses or top jumpers like that that come out on a third day and jump just as well as they do on the first day. So, Is it no, ever... Would it be on your bucket list to jump at top level show jumping ever, ever all? Um, we shall see. I'm not... You know, I'm, I'm actually sadly getting older and older and older and um, I've gone a long way down one street now and I'm only just starting to get some top level horses eventing um, that are without question top level event horses so I feel like I'm a bit too far down one road at the minute but at the same time never say never. Well I think you could go all the way in my opinion just as long as you don't ask me to go eventing. Well, maybe once you retire, age 78, then I might take over from your string. All right, come on, let's have, this is Grand Prix time. It's a bit difficult without an introduction and without... Ladies um, and gentlemen, please welcome into the ring, world number one eventer, show jumping, Oliver Townend! Ding, ding. Don't you do all this How's business that? anymore. How's that for an introduction? Don't be nervous. Not too much pressure. Breathe. Up your tempo a bit. Yes! The winner! Oliver Townend on Man JX. Fabulous, Al. Brilliant. Well, I definitely enjoyed jumping some big offences. So, oh, I enjoyed that. Oh, what about you? Fantastic. Fantastic to be back with you. And um, I hope that your horse live uses again in real life. I'm sure they will. I think uh, 2021. Hopefully everybody will be back, back to normality. Uh, they said they picked us because they said we were the best. So let's show them again. Well, we're very appreciative. Have you seen the size of that fence? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Big, big fences, lots of laughs. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Hey, what about social distancing? Cheers, Paul. See you. <laughs>